What we measure and what politicians are accountable for shapes their actions and the policies they draft and enact. Often gross domestic product, GDP, is used to measure growth of our economy and that growth is often what is thought to be key to the success of a country. At a smaller scale for many, though not all businesses, profit is often seen as the ultimate goal. Even for some individuals, advertisers and social pressures often tell us that our success amounts to the size of our home, the salary we earn, the type of car we drive, or the model of our iPhone. All of these have impact on the planet. They drive more production and consumption and often downplay the environment as a lesser concern. They often mean the environment is seen as an input for production rather than being our life support system, let alone having any value for its own sake. These metrics and the focus that they bring can also drive a sort of employment relationship which puts pressure on workers. People can be seen not as family or community members with value in their own right, but as an input to production and a cost to be reduced. This means that some people don't get enough work, it means that some people aren't paid enough for their work, and it can mean that some people are literally on demand at the click of an app and so don't have enough security in their work. It can also mean that the way jobs are designed can add to the pressure and lack of enjoyment at work. Fortunately, these narrow measures of success don't dominate everywhere. Governments such as New Zealand, Finland, Wales, Iceland and Scotland are recognising that simply growing the rate of GDP does not lead to good lives for all citizens and are thinking of more about the direction and the composition of growth rather than simply the rate. And there are many, many businesses that are seeing profit not in and of a goal in and of itself, but as a means to deliver other outcomes such as environmental benefit or good jobs for workers in the form of worker cooperatives. And you'll be hearing from one of my favorites of these this weekend, Green City Whole Foods. And people too, not least given the upheaval of the coronavirus pandemic, are realizing that there is more to life than the biggest paycheck or a fancy new kitchen, if that means having to work long hours and miss out on other aspects of life. So what does all of this mean for climate policy? Well, it means Scotland needs to double down and not dial back on its work on new measures of progress. The government already collects a lot of data and collates metrics beyond GDP. And many of these are set out in the national performance framework. The risk is that when it comes to the crunch, GDP can trump other goals and it is still seen as a goal in and of itself when talking about the economy and how to solve challenges such as poverty or a lack of jobs because of the coronavirus lockdown. What Scotland should do is get its head around how growth is a means to an end, not a goal in itself. And things like the NPF and how it influence policy and the government's budget should be reshaped accordingly. I think we need to follow Wales and create a commissioner for the well-being of future generations whose job it is, is to check all policies and work with government agencies to make sure what they are doing is in service of the well-being of people and planet. Scotland also needs to double down on its support for the sort of business models that take a broader view of success. For many years, the government has worked to support social enterprises, cooperatives, community interest companies, B Corps and so on, all forms of businesses that have a broader measure of success and simply short-term profit. What it needs to do now is aim to go further, to have these business models making up a far greater proportion of the economy than they currently do. This means encouraging new businesses to become cooperatives or social enterprises. It means directing procurement to these sorts of firms. And it means utilising planning laws to encourage these businesses into our high streets. If Scotland is really going to change the way its working practices are to tackle the climate emergency in a fair and effective way, it needs to make sure the goals of the economy and the activities of businesses are aligned to this. Scotland is doing better than some countries on this front. It is just not doing enough yet.